Hey, Missouri Nation, back with Joel and Bob once again, still in the IFR realm, like we've been talking about the past few weeks now. IFR approaches, IFR approach clearances. I was always taught the acronym PTAC, my position, altitude, turn, and clearance. But I remember as a, as a private pilot, this is, this is before Joel, um, as, a, as a private pilot, I was weak on radios. So stepping in the IFR environment, that is where I really lack. So when I get that big, long radio call, two, three Mike Zulu, you're five miles from the final approach fix, turn left this heading, 2,000 till establish, clear ILS 3.6. It's and not great. Thank yeah. you. Now, but you then, it all. then I would look at my instructor, look at Joel and go, Joel, you do it. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I don't know what they're saying. Um, help me with that, both from a, from a very experienced corporate pilot perspective, but also from a controller perspective. Mm -hmm. Why are you so wordy with everything? I've got right. stuff printed in front of me, too. I know sure. a lot of this stuff ahead yeah. of time. Bob, I'll let you kind of start. Well, obviously, the, a lot of it has to do with the legal aspects of it. Mm -hmm. So where we don't get to choose those things. They tell us how we want to say it. And, and as a, we talk about radio things, and when I was very young and learning to do approach clearances, my trainer sat down and had me do an ILS approach clearance 10 times in a break room before oh. they figured it out. But it's altitude, mm -hmm. heading, and then we're clear for the approach. Right. Um, I get a variety of readbacks, mm -hmm. a ton of readbacks. Some read back everything. Mm -hmm. Some go clear for the approach. But you can't take that, right? I will take anything. The readback isn't as important as I see the turn coming and I see you established. Because my next requirement is to ensure that you're established on the final. Mm -hmm. You're established on the final in a safe manner. If you're not, then I would query you, Jason, do you want to continue this approach or do you want to do something else? Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things. That's my main concern. So I'll issue the approach clients, and a lot of times it comes out really, really fast. Right. Because I'm under the gun for a lot of things. And because it's so second nature to me, what is, as you a pilot, what are you listening for when I issue the approach notes? Are you listening for anything or are you just waiting for that? I, I wouldn't hear the magic words, I'm cleared for the approach. Right. right? And, and usually a heading. I know my altitudes. I That's know correct. this approach is at 1700. Right. I know. This. So once I hear clear for the approach, I kind of go altitude. Do you what, listen to the head? Yeah. Do you listen to the heading? Absolutely. So. Because I'm assuming you know the best intercept for correct. me. But then it brings up another weird thing. We, we talked about this before we were filming that. What happens when we have like that, that T style approach? Like we can take 90 degrees, but sometimes you baby us around the turn and sometimes you throw us right through final. Like what, what's up? And that? that's good. We talked about this before. That's of, right. As the air traffic controller, what is the procedure and how far outside of the approach fix do, Correct. You, do you have to so put us? So on a standard ILS, for example, we are IMC and we're going to shoot a real ILS approach. The requirements for us are final approach fix, then the approach gate, is called is one mile outside of it. We have to have you step. Now. What's that? It's just a fictitious miles from a final approach fix. Okay. Gotcha. That's what they call the approach gate. And then we have to establish two miles outside of that. So essentially three miles from the final approach fix. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of wordy, but this speaking. So most fixes from, are five miles. So we're mm -hmm. talking eight miles from Correct. the airport. Correct. So that's my requirement as a controller to get you established prior to that point. Right. Three miles essentially from the final approach fix. If I don't do that, then I have to make arrangements otherwise there are ways in which I can resolve that situation, but that is what I'm shooting for every time when we're doing ILSs uh, in a real ILS environment. So, so what if I'm VFR flight following practicing? Right. If you're practicing, or you can also say, I, if you're IMC, I want to go right at the marker. He calls that the slam dunk approach. Slam dunk, yeah. right. Well, in a practice... <laughs> we got that hauling checks back in the day. That's good. Yeah. Well, in practice approach world, I can put you right on the marker on VFR conditions as right. well. It just depends on what's going on. But, you know, when we talk about 90-degree turns to final, one of the things that I get a lot of questions about is turn into final and late turns to final, early turns to final, how does that work? What's going on with that? And my response to that is for me personally, it's a, it's a feel thing. Mm -hmm. I'm basically um, thinking, ah, oh, turn them now, turn them now, turn them now, turn them now, turn them now. And, and sometimes I go, ah, oh, I, I nailed it. It looks great. And other times I go, it's a little early. And, and sometimes I'm late. And even the most seasoned controller mm -hmm will miss a turn to final. Wow. It just happens. As a pilot, though, I'm finding, go ahead. Or now, as if that happens and we see that, do yeah. we query the Well, there are different ways you can do that. One is we don't, we are required, if we're going to drive you through the final, to tell you this is a vector through the final for spacing as an example. Mm -hmm. That is in the book. That's we are required to do that. But generally speaking, you can tell when it's not a turn, it's spacing 
thing. It's right. just a, we get distracted. You know, yeah. hey, I was, I was on the line with another controller or somebody else called or just as I'm getting ready to turn you and I'm feeling the hair in the back of my neck raise, somebody calls me for something and, and you're like, oh my God, the 10 seconds this guy's, yeah, and here you go through the final. Yeah. It's, um, but you just have to lay with the last clearance that you got. If that means you're going through the final, you're going through the final. Right. How you resolve that afterwards, if you are in a situation where it's now a cranking big turn back to the final, mm -hmm. for example, and it's going to put you in an unsafe position, you have to as a pilot, and I'm finding this out as well, raise your hand and say, I can't continue with this approach. We need to do something different. Wow. Um, that is the biggest takeaway right. from flying that I found was don't allow me, the controller, to put me, the pilot, in a bad situation. That's, right. that's, a, that's a real big issue. I'm finding out more um, in that regard, and that's, that's important for me. Mm -hmm. so, um, I also see in the larger airplanes, or as you're working on your commercial, the, the technically advanced airplanes mm -hmm. with the autopilots. Oh, yeah. If you set up the approach on the autopilot and you intercept, the autopilot will automatically track inbound. Right. And if you don't have your clearance first, or that's where communication comes in with the controllers. And, and knowing the technology. And knowing technology, which wow. you have to have now in, in airplanes yeah. to Absolutely. get your commercial license. Yeah. Absolutely. It's kind of one of those neat um, things that you – I don't think we'll ever resolve it, but you have to, awareness is more important. Sure. And how you handle a situation, because remember, I am sitting in a radar room. You, I am then issuing instruction and may put a pilot behind the power curve. Wow. And we certainly don't want that. So the most important thing is um, fly a safe approach, and, and mm -hmm. that's it's a teamwork effort thing. So, sure. Last yeah. question for you, Bob. You mentioned someone sent me through the final approach mm -hmm. fix or final right. approach course. How do I raise my hand? I was always taught me ident. Is that is no? That I mean, there are different that... ways. Ident would not get my attention typically. Okay. Uh, very unusual for you to be identing, certainly. But right, so you're not I, looking it, for it. No, not at all. It would be a situation where, if I'm if I go through the final and I'm bringing you back, I immediately go, okay, is he established on the final prior to the three miles from the final approach fix? If mm -hmm. not, I have to ask. Mm -hmm. Hey, do we box this thing around, or do we, or we don't want to continue? Mm -hmm. That's one option. Um, another is um, we need to just do something else, or hey, just maintain 2,000. We're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. There's a it's a teamwork effort. There's a big concern. Uh, peer pressure is a wonderful thing when using moderation, and uh -huh. and controllers are definitely going, hey, nice turn to final. Yeah. And you go, ah, you know. So there's a, a peer pressure inside so that you don't do these things. Right. But they still occur. They will continue to occur. Uh, how you handle them uh, is make sure your plane is in a safe flying manner. That's the biggest part. And if it's yeah. not, then you have to tell the controller, I can't continue this. I need to do something different. Yeah. That's the point. best way. Just get out of frequency. I can't do it. No. Super. Right? Super, super good point. Again, some great IFR tips over these previous three weeks. Uh, like the previous weeks, uh, Joel and Bob will be in the comments as well, helping you all uh, with any uh, really VFR or IFR related questions with that. So listen, enjoy the rest of your day. And Bob, what's the most important thing to remember? A good pilot is always learning. The snap was too late, but it was <laughs> close. It was close. <laughs> we'll work See on that next guys. time. <laughs> Take a two-week free trial of our online ground school and see why Aviation Consumer Magazine named it the top online ground school on the market. The first thing you'll notice is that we never teach to the test. We teach real-world skills that are going to keep you and your loved ones safe when you fly. Now, it's because of this real-world teaching, you'll pass your knowledge test and your check ride with flying colors. With one membership, you get access to all our courses, plus weekly webinars with myself and this outstanding M0A.com team. It's really like an interactive TV show broadcast from our studio, where you get to interact with a team of CFIs. We also offer live support and email support to make sure you succeed. Now, one thing you'll notice is that M0A is like nothing else on the market. It is truly a flight training community geared towards making you a safer, smarter pilot because a good pilot is always learning. It's much more than a slogan for us. It is truly a mission. So click below and take a two week, no strings attached trial of our top rated private instrument, commercial and FOI courses. Once you join our flight training community, I promise you will never want to leave.